Hey guys, so, so we're at the park with the L6 and I'm gonna go ahead and do a flight test with this guy. The FPV screen, see how it does, get some recording on the camera. And I'm gonna go ahead and make the camera just kind of pointing forward. You have to uh, adjust it with your finger. You can tilt down or forward however you want, but I'm just gonna kind of tilt it. Make sure it's going straight forward for this flight and see how this does. Went ahead and put like a four gigabyte SD card in here. I had laying around. You will have to provide it looks like your own SD card for this one. They don't include one in the package, but a good idea to just have like a platform. You can kind of level things. If things go weird, you can kind of re-level, recalibrate the gyros and accelerometers if you need to. Cool thing about this one is uh, it's taking the power. The screen is taking the power from the controller. Just plugs in right there. Here we can see we have FPV now as soon as we turn it on. Anyway, let's do a flight test. So binding up and down there we go so let's see how it does okay so this is going to be rate one we do have about a 5 to 15 wind coming from that direction Whoa. as you can see it's kind of blowing it back so rate one is trying to fight the wind barely it can barely even fight the, the wind in rate one so going to immediately go into a different rate and I'm going to turn off the lights just to get a little more battery power in the daytime so you can see the green lights on the bottom I'm going to turn those off by pressing up on the throttle trim and then down on the throttle trim should get us into rate two and then down one more time we'll, you're going to hear three beeps and that's rate three so much more pitch and roll here All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is um, go out and get a range test. Hopefully you guys can kind of see the screen here. It's a little overcast, but it um, should be better for viewing the FPV screen here. I'm trying to get that in view a little bit, but I'll tell you how it is as I go out. Let's just go ahead and do a range test. I'm gonna go out as far as I can from me here while I'm rolling the controller back and forth just to see. I'm gonna go all the way across the park see where it starts to kind of cut out so there we go so it's kind of cutting out on control there and that's maybe 100 150 feet so um, not the best range on this the FPV was nice and clear at that range but kind of like others this one does suffer from a low control range compared to the FPV range so um, this may be a candidate for a controller range mod maybe doing one of those eventually but anyway let's be let's go ahead and go through some of the features on this thing so we did launch from um, from this direction let's see some of the advanced features so flipping right trigger so you're gonna need to be moving in a direction it looks like and then pressing the right trigger to flip so we can actually be going and then flipping at the same time so that's kind of neat can see there how I was going and it did drop I did have to give it full acceleration to maintain this altitude but it does flip pretty good if you're moving and flipping it seems to drop okay now that I'm actually flying and I'm hitting the camera button it seems like it is taking some photos and so let's try to start the video here pressing and holding okay now the video actually the countdown timer did turn red here I can see so it seems like it is now taking video so I'll have that up on the screen as well. All right, so let's see. So let's try the return to home and uh, headless mode. And that should be activated by clicking in the left thumbstick. So I clicked in the left thumbstick once and it looks like it's spot on. I'm going ahead and I'm constantly doing a yaw and I'm pushing forward and forward is always forward. Backwards is always back and right is always right left is always left so the headless mode is spot on on this it seems so far let's go ahead and do a return to home clicking in the right thumbstick and yeah so that's working let me get out there again and you can see it tilt when I go ahead and click in the right thumbstick so I'm just gonna hover here and then click in the right thumbstick and there it goes coming right back to us so that works good I'm gonna get out of headless mode by clicking in the left thumbstick again you can hear one beep and we're back into normal flight. So far so good.
Only thing so far is the range is a little less than desired, but uh, let's get some close-up shot of this. I'm going to turn the lights back on. And let's see what we got close up. You can see the lights in the front are white and all the rest are green. Let's do a little bit of aggressive flying and see how this thing does. Fighting some wind now, but it seems to do well. Definitely be coming back way faster towards us with the wind. And so that's the yaw rate is, is a constant yaw rate. There's our low level blinking lights already coming on. Funnels are a little slow, but it will do it. Wind's kind of coming up. So I'm just going to let it land itself. The low level lights are blinking. That means it is going to be landing shortly. Wind's really blowing now, maybe 15 now. And I'm just going to fly around until it lands itself. So it does give you quite a bit of flight time after the low level lights start blinking. Again, I don't advise you guys to fly this close to your face. This is just for the review and I do have my glasses on and I am an experienced flyer. So there we go. So low level landing initiated. I am holding the throttle up. and it should be shutting off. There it goes. So there's the low voltage cutoff. And it did stop the video when the low voltage cutoff uh, hit and it stopped the motors. It also stopped the video. I see it turned back to white. So hopefully um, that video saved and we can have that up on the screen. All right, cool. That was a two uh, good test flight of the L6, Lady RC L6. Let's go ahead and take this thing uh, inside, do some house flight. And then uh, after that, go back to the bench and do a pros and cons and see how this thing did. Okay, so we're in the house with the Liddy RC L6. And do a quick little house flight, see how it does. In kind of a no wind environment. There we go. Immediately have FPV on the screen. And let's go ahead and take a photo. Got to bind first. Take a photo. There we go. Start some video holding the camera button there we go see our timer on the screen so you can see how it's much brighter in the uh, in the house since it's a low light environment so it looks really nice and uh, clear here let's try it out okay there's a little bit of a lift test there from a hover to full throttle right now not bad for a full FPV rig Seems like it has a, a nice and fast uh, acceleration, but keep in mind the battery is brand new. I mean, it is fully charged, so let's see what else we can do with this thing. Go ahead and do a calibration real quick. Both sticks to the bottom left and both sticks to the bottom right. So that's doing an accelerometer and probably a gyro calibration. and. Uh, when we do that, we want to make sure all of our trims are all centered. Let's try that again. Okay. So everything should be calibrated. I know this table is level, so it should be super level. There we go. So let's see how level this thing flies without really any trim. Drifting to the right a little bit, but not much. Trim that probably with one click, one or two clicks, and it should probably hover pretty good. Yeah, there we go. Just a little bit of a drift, and this version doesn't have the altitude hold, so it's going to kind of drop a little bit. But anyway, this is rate one, and here's our pitch. 
Looks like I did turn off the lights. Let's turn those back on. So pushing up on the trim button there for the lights on and off. And here's the roll in rate one, back and forth. Does kind of a, have a little bit of a gradual pitch until it reaches its maximum. Here's our yaw in rate one. So I clicked in the left thumbstick and this should be, yeah, that's headless mode. See the lights blinking, forward is always forward no matter which yaw you're at. And right is right, left is left, and back is towards you. So that's good. No matter which yaw rate I'm in, it seems like it's going pretty good so far. So out of that mode, clicking in the left thumbstick again. And clicking in the right thumbstick. That's our return to home. Cool. So here we are out at a distance from us. And clicking the right thumbstick. And it should come back to us. Let's see what happens if we turn it sideways and click that in. Okay, so little problem there. So if it's not in headless mode and you do click it, the return to home, it's just going to go back to whatever its backwards position is of the craft. So you see I'm turning to the left there and I'm clicking it in. And it's going to the right because the back of the craft is pointing to the right. So it looks like you have to go into headless mode. Then you can be into whatever orientation you want. And now let's see if the return to home works. Clicking in the right thumbstick. Yeah, so now it's coming back to me. So keep that in mind. To have an accurate return to home, you need to go into headless mode first on this one. So clicking out of headless mode. There we go. All right, so let's try to switch up the rates. Uh, that should be this button down here. So that's going to be rate two. You can see how much faster the pitch is on this. And let's see if there's one more. Yeah, so three rates. Actually, I was in third, so uh, first, second, and then third has the maximum pitch and roll for fast flying. So it looks like it's pretty fast in third rate. And let's go ahead and look at those rates with the yaw as we do that. So here's rate one, rate two, and rate three. Okay, so it is looking like it's staying the same rate of yaw throughout those three rates of pitch and roll. So you're not going to get a faster yaw no matter what you do. Let's see what happens when we turn off the controller. Uh, starting, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video first. Actually, let's try to take a picture while the video is recording. Always like to see if crafts can do that. Pressing in the button to take a picture. And that just stopped the video. So it's going to stop the video and then you can go ahead and click and take your picture. And then you'll have to hold it down and start your video again with the left button. So let's go ahead and turn off the controller. Get like a safe height here. And then uh, go ahead and turning off now. One two and it just drops so a little bit of durability testing there too and it seems like it's uh, no problem seems like everything is fine gonna go ahead and turn the controller back on bind it and we're back in business so anytime you want to crash anytime you do crash like that too you should always put it back on a level surface and rebind the gyros recalibrate the gyros and the accelerometer just so you know that everything is back to normal. Cool. We got some good tests there. Let's go ahead and fly around the house and uh, let me take some snapshots while in flight. See how good the pictures are. Let me get up here by this picture here. Snapshot. Snapshot. going to start the recording again by holding in the left trigger. There we go. And let's go up here and see what we can see up here. Let's spy on Kian. Hi, Kian! <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, now I'm I'm gonna go ahead and just fly with only the FPV. I'm looking only at the screen. And this one looks like it's pretty easy to fly, actually. Only with FPV. I'm gonna try to go into the kitchen real fast. Okay, purely FPV now. Yeah, this one has a great response time. And I can see it really, I can see the screen really well. So I'm gonna turn. Hopefully not crashing anything. Oh. Oh. Okay. Definitely a little tough in tight quarters if you're um, trying to FPV while you're going slow. It's actually easier when you're going faster forward to maneuver through objects. Okay. So that's good to know. Can't rebind after that crash. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off the power and then turn on and just make sure everything's okay when we turn back on. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and uh, recalibrate the gyros and the accelerometer and see how it does. Oh. <laughs> okay, so it's actually in low level landing mode. The battery is actually spent. So it looks like it already did shut off. And that's actually why it um it didn't re it didn't uh want to give us the flight when we uh the lights are blinking. So it does have that um automatic motor cutoff when you go down and uh you the low battery level fail safe hits so that's cool so let's go ahead and um get back to the bench get some flight timings on this thing go ahead and go through the pros and cons and uh, just see how it did hey guys welcome back so got some flight video with the lily rc l6 out in the uh park back in the house got some uh, different environments to see exactly how it did and I'm going to go through some pros and cons real quick here on the back on the bench and just kind of wrap this review up. So first of all, I was hoping for altitude hold on this and unfortunately this version doesn't have altitude hold. It said there might be on the box, but um, then in the instructions it explained that there are actually different versions that have altitude hold and they don't. So fortunately it doesn't. I'm, I'm assuming the version that does have altitude hold would probably have a spring loaded uh, throttle here, which this one doesn't. So that would be cool if uh, you get the altitude hold version. As far as the 5.8 gigahertz FPV goes, it worked great. Uh, it was uh, this little clamp here on the screen. If you missed the initial uh, unbox and setup, I'll have that card pop up here so you can see how this whole thing kind of goes together. And it's real intuitive, uh, real easy to take on and off this clamp and um, this screen as well. Really like how the screen is powered in to the controller where you only need one set of four batteries to power the whole controller and the screen. You can unplug the screen if you don't want to use it or take this whole assembly off if you just want to fly without the FPV. So pretty good setup they have going here. A little con on this guy was uh, there was no SD card in the actual camera. Uh, I have one in here now, but you have to supply your own SD card. There was nothing in the box. So that would have been cool if they could just put in your basic four gigabyte card or something. Um, really for an RTF package like this, the norm is to have some kind of, even if just a small two to four gig SD card, just to get the new flyer um, going with an SD card. Otherwise they're gonna have to buy their own. So really wish they would have included an SD card in the package. This one, uh, as I spoke of before, it does have good orientation lighting. So you've got uh, the white in the front as, as well as the props here. Do have different colors in the front, white in the front, and the lights are white in the front and then you have the black props in the back with the green lights underneath which are easily visible from the side and the bottom so so really good job on the lighting on this one i compared it to uh in the first setup and unboxing video the previous video i did on this i know i was kind of comparing it to the um mjx x600 but you know what the x600 is 7.4 volt which is twice as much power as this uh, this one is a really smooth flyer it's really smooth i like how it's it's uh it flies uh but as far as comparing it to the power of the x600 it's just not gonna not going to compare to compete as far as power wise just because it's it's the um uh 
3.7 volt versus the 7.4 volt that the X600 has. That aside, it did have good lift for a 3.7 volt FPV copter with the whole FPV setup on here. It had good lift. When you did take the FPV camera off here, it was really good lift. So um, really commendable on how light they actually made it. Pretty light for a hex copter like this. And it did do very well. It was very zippy and peppy when you had the camera off. Getting to the rates of this guy here, it did have only one yaw rate. Would have liked to see maybe uh, matching the three pitch and roll rates, but it only had one yaw rate and three pitch and roll rates, which gradually got increased for each one, which is good. The yaw they chose was kind of a medium yaw that matched it pretty well. Would have liked to see maybe one more button on the remote to, to control the pitch and roll on their camera. Some quads out now have that function where they have just a little motor and a gear in here to uh, pitch the camera. That's kind of, uh, you know, kind of one of those extra things that I'd like to start seeing in these quads that offer FPV and stuff, uh, just to make it um, one more cool factor on these. But it did pretty well. At least you have the option to even pitch up here forward or or down and actually the reason I um, I have some tape on here some velcro on here some some dual lock on here and also place the antenna like this is this antenna this camera actually works perfectly with the um, JJRC X1 so I'm using this as an FPV camera on the X1 a really affordable brushless quadcopter you might want to check that out too but when you have the antenna down like this versus uh, sideways like this you get better range from the sides since the radiation of the signal radiates out from the side of the antenna here. Uh, when it's like this, you'll get less range if the quad copter is directly, if the copter is directly above you, but if it's on the side of you and far out and above like this, you'll get the best range if you kind of hang your antenna down like this. If it's, if it's uh, back in this notch here, you'll get the best range if it's directly above you, but not many people fly with it directly above their heads. So I'd recommend doing something like this, just hanging it down and bringing it down like this so you have better range from the sides on the FPV. Return to home and the headless actually worked pretty good on this. The only catch to that was I found in, for the return to home to work correctly, you had to be in headless. For some reason, when you hit the return to home, when you weren't in headless, it would just, wherever, whichever direction it was facing, it would just go back in return to home. So you had to switch into that headless feature first and then hit the return to home. No matter which direction you're facing, it would go ahead and come back in the direct, the opposite of the direction it actually launched from, which you should be at when, when you hit that return to home. Another not so bad con is I would would like to see like a FPV hood on this thing. Uh, most of the FPV copters now have some kind of hood that plastic hood that pops out and really need something like that in daylight flight in the sun just so you can have some shade for looking at the screen. The good thing about this though is it does have a matte finish screen which did reduce the glare a little bit. The video and pictures, uh, this thing did have to stop the video to take pictures. Some quads, some copters can actually keep taking video and do a picture and then, you know, keep taking video when you take a picture. This one, unfortunately, when you take a picture, it stops the video. So you have to start the video again to continue recording. The TX shutoff did pretty well. It did a uh, two second after I shut off the controller, it would uh, just go ahead and drop out of the air. So at least it's not going to fly away on you when it loses connection. And also the low voltage uh, landing came down and it did shut off the motors even if I was going ahead and trying to, you know, keep the throttle on. And as far as the range goes on the FPV and the control, I was getting about 150 feet of range, which is okay. That's kind of the medium territory with one of with a mini size quad or hex like this. Would have liked to see a little more. The FPV was fine up to that 100 feet of control range, so no complaints in the FPV. Then as far as the flight times go, uh, with the camera, with the FPV going and stuff and with the camera on it, I was getting 6 minutes and 20 seconds until the low voltage lights would blink, and then another 20 seconds to 6 minutes and 40 seconds until it would do its low voltage landing and then eventually shut off the motors for its low voltage cutoff. And then when I took the camera off, um, 
as I mentioned, way more sportier, way more fun to fly. If you're just if you're not looking to take pictures or video, go ahead and take that off. You'll have a lot more fun with it. And I was getting uh, seven minutes and thirty seconds until the low voltage lights would blink, and then another, and then actually immediately after the low voltage lights would blink, maybe because it was so much lighter and less draw was coming from the battery. Uh, as soon as that seven minutes and thirty second blinking hit it would actually immediately land like just a few seconds afterwards so kind of a cool hexacopter I did like it overall the FPV setup was pretty solid and everything worked pretty good but overall very satisfied I think it's a good FPV for first timers to kind of get into at a lower cost and if especially the cool factor that it's a hex anyway guys I do a lot of reviews like this flight test mods all kinds of stuff so check out the channel I think you'll like it and don't forget to check this in the description I'll have the link down there in the description of where you can pick this guy up if you're interested it'll take you to the product website and you can just purchase it there if you're interested but anyway anyway guys thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching